Thank you very much for tuning in. I do not replace scripture study, King James Version of the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price are all holy scriptures. For the Lord Jesus Christ, I'll be reading and expounding from the Book of Mormon, but we'll get into these other scriptures at a later time. So today's number is 23, which is medium, like doing some bowling. Not too difficult. Not too difficult at all. Alma Jr., chapter 53. The Lamanite prisoners are used to fortify the city bountiful. Dissensions among the Nephites give rise to Lamanite victories. Helaman takes command of the 2,000 stripling sons of the people of Ammon. Verse 1. And it came to pass that they did set guards over the prisoners of the Lamanites and did compel them to go forth and bury their dead, yea, and also the dead of the Nephites who were slain. And Moroni placed men over them to guard them while they should perform their labors. Verse 2. And Moroni went to the city of Mulek with Lehi and took command of the city and gave it unto Lehi. Now behold, this Lehi was a man who had been with Moroni in the more part of all his battles, and he was a man like unto Moroni, and they rejoiced in each other's safety, yea, they were beloved by each other, and also beloved by all the people of Nephi. Verse 3, And it came to pass that after the Lamanites had finished burying their dead, and also the dead of the Nephites, they were marched back into the land bountiful, and Tiancum, by the orders of Moroni, caused that they should commence laboring, digging a ditch round about the land or the city bountiful. Verse 4. And he caused that they should build a breastwork of timbers upon the inner bank of the ditch, and they cast up dirt out of the ditch against the breastwork of timbers. And thus they did cause the Lamanites to labor until they had encircled the city of bountiful round about with a strong wall of timbers and earth to exceeding height. Verse 5. And this city became an exceeding stronghold ever, ever after. And in this city they did guard the prisoners of the Lamanites, yea, even within a wall which they had caused them to build there with their own hands. Now Moroni was compelled to cause the Lamanites to labor because it was easy to guard them while they labor, and he desired all his forces when he should make an attack upon the Lamanites. Verse 6. And it came to pass that Moroni had thus gained a victory over one of the greatest of the armies of the Lamanites and had obtained possession of the city of Mulek, which was one of the strongest holds of the Lamanites in the land of Nephi. And thus he had also built a stronghold to retain his prisoners. Verse 7. And it came to pass that he did no more attempt to battle with the Lamanites in that year, but he did employ his men in preparing for war, yea, and in making fortifications to guard against the Lamanites, yea, and also delivering their women and their children from famine and affliction and providing food for their armies. Verse 8. And now it came to pass that the armies of the Lamanites on the West Sea south while in the absence of Moroni on account of some intrigue amongst the Nephites, which caused dissensions among them, had gained some ground over the Nephites, yea, insomuch that they had obtained possession of a number of their cities in that part of the land. Verse 9, And thus because of inequity amongst themselves, yea, because of dissensions and intrigue among themselves, they were placed in the most dangerous circumstances. Verse 10. And now behold, I have somewhat to say concerning the people of Ammon, who in the beginning were Lamanites. But by Ammon and his brethren, or rather by the power and the word of God, they had been converted unto the Lord, and they had been brought down into the land of Zarahemla, and had ever since been protected by the Nephites. Verse 11. And because of their oath, they had been kept from taking up arms against their brethren. For they had taken an oath that they never would shed blood more. And according to their oath, they would have perished. Yea, they would have suffered themselves to fall into the hands of their brethren, had it not been for the pity and the exceeding love 
with which Ammon and his brethren had for them. Verse 12. And for this cause were they brought down into the land of Zarahemla, and they ever had been protected by the Nephites. So what's key to um, keep in mind here, so as we um, go through these verses, as you can see, the Nephites again. And this is just something we have to really, really, really focus on. Now, there's a multitude of things we can learn from the Book of Mormon. But I tell you this, the number one thing that I will always remember, and I'm going to take it to heart, take it to nowadays, that we have to keep this in mind. The cause of the Nephite extinction, the cause of the Nephite destruction is because they were butting heads with themselves, being distracted, allowing the Lamanites to build themselves up, and why the Nephites were weak because they're fighting against themselves, not to blame all the Nephites, though the particular Nephites that gave into wickedness, King Noah, King Amalekaha, Nehor, all these people, Morianton, all these people just causing issues within their own group, you can say. And so because of that, the Nephites were weakened. Now, I fast forward that to today. We have got to stop butting heads with other people. But there's always people that's trying to drag us into things, try to get us into trouble and all that type of stuff. And so we got to divert some of our attention and some of our energy towards those people to kind of keep them off. And while we're doing that, the devil is just preparing themselves where we're in a we well, himself where we're in a, a weaker condition and he can tempt us more easily. So there is a way I know that we can fortify ourselves where we got so many things we have to deal with, but still be able to handle the devil and his temptations. But ultimately, we need to not let ourselves get dragged down in the mud. Don't let ourselves do that because there's so many people that wants to provoke and taunt us that we have to be wise, that we have to be focused. Again, we're supposed to be loving everyone regardless, but we do have to address situations, you know, get it taken care of. But ultimately, keep your eye on the devil. Keep your eye focused on your weaknesses, because that's how we get tripped up. Verse 13. But it came to pass that when they saw the danger and the many afflictions and tribulations which the Nephites bore for them, they were moved with compassion and were desirous to take up arms in the defense of their country. Verse 14, but behold, as they were about to take their weapons of war, they were overpowered by the persuasions of Helaman and his brethren, for they were about to break the oath which they had made. Verse 15, and Helaman feared lest by so doing they should lose their souls. Therefore, all those who had entered into this covenant were compelled to behold their brethren wade through their afflictions in their dangerous circumstances at this time. But behold, it came to pass that they had many souls who had not entered into a covenant that they would not take their weapons of war to defend themselves against their enemies. Therefore, they did assemble themselves together at this time, as many as were able to take up arms, and they called themselves Nephites. Verse 17. And they entered into a covenant to fight for the liberty of the Nephites, yea, to protect the land unto the, uh, unto the land down of their lives. Yea, even they covenanted that they never would give up all their liberty, but they would fight in all cases to protect the Nephites and themselves from bondage. And now behold, there were 2,000 of those young men who entered into this covenant and took their weapons of war to defend their country. And now behold, as they never had hitherto been a disadvantage to the Nephites, they became now at this period of time also a great support, for they took their weapons of war, and they would that Helaman should be their leader. And there were all young men. Next page over. And they were exceedingly valiant of courage, and also for strength and activity. But behold, this was not all. There were men who were true at all times and whatsoever thing they were entrusted. Verse 21. Yea, there were men of truth and soberness, for they had taught to keep the commandments of God and to walk uprightly before him. And now it came to pass that Helaman did march at the head of his 2,000 stripling soldiers 
to support of the people in the borders of the land on the south by the West Sea. And thus ended the 20 and 8th year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And that concludes the chapter. A couple things to expound on here. The first thing, the people of anti-Nephi Lehi are now known as the people of Ammon. So this is the group of Lamanites that were baptized. They were taught by Ammon and his brethren. You can think of the King Mosiah, four sons, but all those that were with Ammon helped those Lamanites to become baptized. And because these specific Lamanites were doing a bunch of murdering and a bunch of wickedness, they covenanted with God that they're not going to do any killing anymore, in which the Lamanites started to slay them because they're not defending themselves. So Ammon and the Nephites took it upon themselves to protect them, but also the people of anti-Nephi Lehi, also known as the people of Ammon now, they supported the Nephites with the things that they needed, food, clothing, you know, to keep their armies good so they can protect them because they're not fighting. The people of Ammon don't want to take up weapons. But in this chapter here, they were about to. But Helaman and his brothers, or you could say Helaman and the people that were with them, were saying, no, don't break that covenant because a covenant is very special and very sacred that you don't want to break that covenant. I mean, unless it's like very drastic situations, but they were willing to do so, which I can understand, you know, people are being slaughtered. And so they're thinking that, hey, we need to defend ourselves. So I understand that. But because they have children, which was wise, that they're saying, okay, you know what? Our children can go ahead and uh, fight for us in our place because these children, the children of the people of Ammon, did not make that covenant. So they're clear to go ahead and defend themselves. But the other thing to keep in mind, that word stripling means youth or young. And while I have this moment, when you're under 100, you're still young. Age is just a number, y'all. So we are young. We are young. I just noticed I've seen so many people that their birth certificate may say they're a certain age, but because they've been taking good care of themselves, they still have youth to them. So keep that in mind. When you're under 100, you're still young. And I'll wrap up with my testimony that I know God loves us, and so does the Savior. I know that there are three separate beings. There's God the Father, there's the Son, who is Jesus Christ, and then there's the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. These three separate beings are united as one. They're, they're separate again, three different gods, but united as one God. And I know they all have the same goal in mind, which is to help us have eternal life. Our Father loves us, the Savior loves us, and the Holy Spirit is there to guide us. We need to always remember that, that we have them to help us. When we have those moments that we have despair, doubt, discouragement, we don't know what to do. I know that prayer is real. Prayer works. Heavenly Father hears and knows all of the things that we go through. But we need to have faith to open our voice, to lift up our souls to him and let him know all the things that trouble us, all the things that we need, the strength we need to go against temptations, to put it off, to become stronger. I know he is willing to bless us based upon our faith in the righteous lives that we live. I know all these things are true and I leave you all with my testimony. In the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, amen.